Welcome back to Close Up on San Diego Business, where we're looking at homegrown businesses close up. I'm your host, Barry Waxler, and I'm here on financialnewsandtalk.com with Andrea Kay and Urban Miars. And we have our next guest, Stephen Hosmer from Royal Energy. Welcome, Stephen. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us a little bit about it. We're, we're taking a, a big shift here from a, uh, a private company to a public company. So tell us a little bit about uh, Royal Energy. Royal Energy is a natural gas and oil exploration production company. Uh, we started out as a family business 27 years ago, grew up, went public, and uh, today we're producing natural gas primarily uh, from Northern California and an exciting new play in Alaska. Great. A quick question before we even get going. I mean, for somebody like myself who doesn't know anything about the energy, you know, say, can we start by even defining what is natural gas? I mean, is that like a dumb question? No, not at all. A lot of people think gas. They think what they put in their car. We're talking natural gas, what you cook with, not what you drive with. Oh, so, okay. Wherever you find oil, you find a little bit of natural gas. But what we focus on is what's called dry gas. We're looking for natural gas pockets alone. Uh, we use seismic technology. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that oil and gas is one of the highest tech industries out there. We use more uh, computing cycles than, uh, than the federal government in some cases. Mm. Wow. So we, we use a process of seismic where we impart sound energy, very much like a medical sonogram. We record those reflections back to the surface. We create the image from it, and we can identify natural gas in, in the ground. And you, you do that from, do you have to go around on site and do, do all this seismic stuff? Or does that happen like from a central location and then you go out and explore from there? How does that work? Good question. It's all directly on the ground. We, we get out there, we walk across the ground, we roll out cables, we put microphones down. Uh, they call them geophones. And then we put a, a sound energy into the earth and record the reflections back, turn it into a visual image. Wow. Wow. And then you go from there. So you're primarily, though, in California and where else? Uh, California and Alaska are primary property areas. Uh, we produce natural gas from uh, Sacramento up to almost Redding uh, in California. And then we have a large property block in Alaska that we acquired two years ago. Well, isn't uh, most of the energy uh, coming from uh, – We're, I think you said we're importing a lot of energy from uh, out of state or out of the country? Well, both. Uh, the, the U.S. imports the vast majority of its energy needs from foreign sources – and California imports 85% of the natural gas that we use from out of state. So uh, being centrally located in the, the uh, Central Valley of California, we're producing natural gas inside of one of the largest economies in the world, uh, let alone America. Wow. So, and you're, you're located right here in San Diego, correct? Yes, we are. Okay, down in uh, Mission Valley. Um, so tell us a little bit about the, the challenges that you're facing and, and what maybe uh, some people can do to help you out. Sure. From a, uh, from a perception standpoint, uh, people often think that the energy they use comes from the switch on the wall. They don't often think that it backs all the way up to a lot of hard work in the field, uh, like you're talking about getting out there on the ground, shooting seismic, and then getting to, uh, to actual exploration, drilling into the ground. We, uh, we provide about 250 jobs per well drilled. Wow. Uh, wow. So there's a lot of work that goes into getting that energy out of the ground and to the market. Wow. So, and then, okay, so you do the seismic stuff on site, you locate it, shoot your picture back, that tells you what's there, you go down to try to get it out, then what happens? How does it go from there to, to my switch on my wall? Very, very good question. Mm -hmm. We drill that well, uh, if it's a successful well, and in our case, Royal Energy has about an 85% uh, success rate. Wow. Uh, that means that we miss or we hit a dry hole about 15 to 25% of the time, uh, and, and that's just a cost that's gone. That's part of our exploration <coughs> risk. But on the uh, successful wells, we, uh, we put a pipe into the ground. We pipe that gas out to market. And in the case of electrical generation, which we touched on, that goes off to generally a turbine generator uh, where they burn that gas, spin a turbine, and generate electricity and, and then move that across the grid system to your house. Hmm. So, and, and you, uh, it's relatively new, or how long have you been uh, working in Alaska? Uh, we acquired our acreage in 2011, and uh, we are getting ready to shoot seismic up there. That, that seismic imaging will take place this winter. Uh, Alaska is very, very remote, and for the environmental sensitivity reasons, we only work in the winter there. So we wow. go out when there's three feet, four feet of snow on the ground, and then even our, our uh, footprints don't last. They melt away in the springtime. So there's no trace in the, in the spring that we've even been there. So we wow. go out and shoot seismic uh, in the winter. We'll process that uh, throughout 2014, 
and then we'll be getting ready to drill in 2015. Now you say you acquired the land. Did you go? Did they allow you to go and do the seismic to see what's there first before you acquired the land? Or I mean, what comes first in this situation, the chicken or the egg? Well, in this case, we had to acquire the land first, completely at our own risk. Uh, the state of Alaska put the, the minerals up for lease. Uh, we bid on those on those lands. We've had some experience there. Our uh, vice president of exploration had worked there under another company in the 80s. So we had a really great idea of what we were getting into. Uh, this is a, a shale play for us. So this is a little bit different than our conventional gas discoveries in California. It's a lot like what you hear about in the Bakken or in the, in the Eagleford shales. This is going to be a shale play that is the source rock that sourced the oil that went into Prudhoe Bay. Hmm. Interesting. Now, what expense you have up front uh, even before you tap uh, natural gas? Uh, we actually had to go in and commit to about $2 million worth of uh, land cost right up front. Uh, the course of the seismic shoot will cost a, a, a little over $8.5 million, and uh, that's before we drill our first well. Uh, the first two wells we're expecting to, to run somewhere around 30 to $35 million uh, for the two, and uh, that's the test phase. So it's a significant expense to, uh, to get out there and look for that energy. But they're happy to let you do, you do that up in Alaska, right? Because that poses a lot of revenue opportunity for them as well, correct? I'd spent about uh, 45 minutes with Governor Parnell back in June, and he was uh, eager to have smaller companies coming into the state. A lot of the, the majors have been in there for years in the Prudhoe Bay discovery, and the state has initiatives uh, right now to try to bring in the smaller companies to, to open up the, the smaller types of plays that the majors really can't concentrate on. That's great. You're listening to Close Up on San Diego Business right here on KFSD AM 1450 and financialnewsandtalk.com. I'm your host, Barry Waxler, here with my co-hosts, Andrea Kay and Urban Miars, along with uh, Royal Energy's uh, president and CEO, um, uh, Stephen Hosmer. So, Stephen, uh, let's, let's talk about uh, the difference, you know, why, um, wouldn't it be a lot more expensive to import all this energy in from out of the country or is there, t tell us a little bit about that. Well, oil and gas is a, a commodity, so it's going to run pretty much whatever it's going to cost to explore it, move it and deliver it. Uh, they can import, uh, you can import oil at a, a cheaper basis and that's why the country has been doing that. Uh, but we need to facilitate a, a better environment for finding it right here at home. Right. But from a security standpoint, energy security standpoint, uh, but also we have the resources here. Uh, we just haven't exerted the, the will to be able to go through and, and find that energy uh, here in the, the domestic U.S. Right. And uh, being a publicly traded company, um, doesn't, uh, what, what does that look like? I assume you're looking for investors in your company as well as um, you know, whatever you're, you're looking for from a, from a technical standpoint. Well, our company strategy from the, the very beginning has been partnering up between uh, company capital and uh, individual partners coming in with us. We have a group of people that follow us and, and participate in every well that we drill. So we, okay. we end up having participants for about 50% of every well, and the company drills half. So that allows us to drill twice as many wells every year, spread that statistical risk, and then allow people to, to participate in the upside. Right. How can people uh, follow your stock? Is there a, a ticker symbol they can follow? Our, our stock symbol, we're on NASDAQ. It's R-O-Y-L. Okay, great. Great. What else, uh, what else can you tell me? What's, what is um, uh, new, topical? What's, what's going on in the oil and gas business right now? Well, there's a large push in, the, uh, in, in a response to the uh, concept of fracking. Uh, fracking is a process that the industry uses to, to open up fissures in the rock to allow oil and gas to flow. And uh, some of the folks have done a, a good job of making people think that's a really bad thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been going on in our industry for over 40 years. And it's so the same. you mean if you frack, um, my, uh, my kitchen's not going to explode if I go to fill up my coffee pot with water? <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. Good. good to know. <laughs> well, it's, it's the same process they use at the gravel plant right over here in Mission Valley. They break up that rock, they take some gravel, and uh, build the foundation to your house. Uh, the difference for our industry is that, that we're doing it about two and a half miles deep, and we're leaving it all in place. But uh, people don't understand that the oil and gas contained in that rock would escape out if we break outside of our zone. So there's nobody that's more concerned of keeping that thing from going any further than the oil and gas company. We don't want to lose our product. 
We don't want that product to escape out into a different zone. We want to be able to produce it back into our well. So we take really good care to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, in California, the gas wells that we're drilling don't require fracking. It's a really good quality sand that we're, we're targeting. Uh, so we don't have to do any of that here. But uh, just trying to help people understand what that process is, that it's uh, fracking doesn't mean evil. Uh, yeah, sure, there can be companies that do things wrong in any industry. But right. done right and done effectively, it's the, the process of getting that oil and gas back to the well. Now, for a Sandy, you you were born and raised in San Diego because this is a San Diego company. From high school onward, yeah. From high school on. So how does a Southern California San Diego guy go to Alaska in the middle of winter? I mean, is this like Mount Everest <laughs> where you have to go to like base camp for three weeks to acclimate? I mean, how do you do that? Am I going to see you on an episode of Life Below Zero? <laughs> it's pretty chilly, pretty chilly. I was up a couple of weeks ago and it was 20 degrees and I'm headed back at the 1st of November, and it's going to be minus 20. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's so a little challenging. how do you for, handle that, though? I mean I, you know, I mean, I know that gets to give you clothing for that, though, but, I mean, that seems extraordinary you know, to have to go through that for some business. It is a difficult climate, but uh, they, there's good gear. Uh, and up on the, the leases, there's, there is a requirement. All the companies up there get together, and we establish requirements for uh, – for the survival gear and uh, what's appropriate for that, that but there's climate. Not, there's not like a Marriott or a Four Seasons up there, is there? There's you not go even to, like, a hotel. The jacuzzi afterwards. <laughs> so we're there's not. No, they're all based on uh, camps. The the oil and gas uh, companies uh, band together and uh, form camps there. Uh, they're like lunar lander modules, literally wow. just on top of the ground uh, to to minimize that impact. Wow. Yeah, so you, you said you said 250 employees uh, approximately per well. Uh, will you be getting a lot of the employees for your new exploration in Alaska from Alaska natives? We, we do. Uh, we're in the process now of the logistics and the planning for drilling. We won't actually drill until 2015, but it's 250 jobs, not necessarily royal employees. We do a lot of contract work. Uh, the rigs are all contracted out and, and a lot of subcontract labor. Uh, but uh, it's an employment statistic of about 250 jobs per well drilled. That's great. Well, we're, we are running a little short on time. Uh, Stephen, tell everybody how we can get a hold of you, how we can uh, follow up on Royal Energy. Sure. Royal Energy is R-O-Y-L. Our stock symbol is our website, royal.com. And uh, we can be reached right here in San Diego, uh, 619-881-2800. Great. Well, I thank you very much for coming. This, is, this has been a great interview. Uh, you're listening to uh, Close Up on San Diego Business, where we get up close and personal with homegrown San Diego businesses and the people that are working to make a difference in our community. This is FinancialNewsAndTalk.com. I'm your host, Barry Waxler, and we'll be right out, right back after the break with more homegrown business close up. 